Three Brilliant Minutes, sponsored by Sinclair Heating and Cooling for 24-7 comfort on call. Well, we welcome in Brad, and he's got a picture of A.J. Dillon's brain, and somewhere in there was that children's book, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. No, that's yep. not his brain. Well, it is a brain, and we have two <laughs> stories today about brains. Okay. okay. Let's begin with story number one. It is about astronaut brains, okay? So, There's a slight resemblance to you, just so you know. Is it getting that bad? <laughs> First, I thought it was you, you superimposed your astro extra. No, thing no, no, no. This is from the University of Well, we are of talking about big brains, so. Space travel's hidden impact. Long missions trigger significant changes in astronaut brains. Long missions defined as there's no change two weeks or less, but this change starts to happen after about two weeks in space up through six months, but there's no additional change afterwards, okay? okay. So with that said, the researchers studied brain scans, essentially, of 30 astronauts from before and after their space journey. They found that the brain's ventricles expand significantly in those who completed longer missions. I know what you're wondering, what are these ventricles? We all have them in our brains. They're cavities, and these cavities are filled with a special fluid that provides protection, nourishment, and waste removal in the brain, okay? okay? So what is happening with these ventricles, they're expanding because of the absence of gravity, and in doing so, it pushes the brain higher up into the skull and, you know, as these ventricles expand, okay? So this is not anything you see on Earth because, again, it's gravity right. prevents it from happening here, but the problem is, is they don't know the long-term consequences, if any, on both health and perhaps even impacting behavior because it is a brain. So they actually suggest that maybe astronauts should wait as long as three years between long missions because it takes three years for their brains to return to normal by Earth standards, which is really yeah. kind of scary to be real honest. We'll but see, starts tracking the schedule for astronauts now and see if NASA takes a hold of this and, and waits those three years. Correct, and also for planning sure, as well, right. you know. Yeah. Okay, we have another story about brains. This one comes from South America. Four weeks to a healthier brain. That sounds pretty good, right? Resistance training can prevent or delay Alzheimer's disease. It was another mouse study, and we've talked about these mm -hmm. mice before. They're specifically bred with a mutation that leads to the equivalent of Alzheimer's in the mouse, okay? So that's why they use these mice for these kind of studies. But they trained them to climb a ladder at a 90 degree, or 80 degree slope, excuse me, and loads were attached to their tails, which sounds cruel, <laughs> corresponding to 75, 90%, and 100% of their body weight to mimic that resistance training and they let them climb these ladders for four weeks and here's what they found that blood samples showed that um, the stress hormones that are associated with this plaque buildup okay. was not present it was they had plenty of anti-inflammatory hormones okay okay that was good and when they actually looked at the brain tissue there was a decrease in the formation of those plaques in the brain now the problem of course is many Alzheimer's patients don't have the coordination right. to perform these exercises, but in early onset Alzheimer's, it may be a very affordable approach. Yeah, or and just incorporate it before that, even as you start. Well, we all should exercise, for sure. With 75% <laughs> of our body weight tied behind right. us, going up an incline. All right, Brad, thanks yes. so much. We'll